Imagine my surprise when I saw that Webhost Most offers free web hosting without requiring any payment information. They also give you a free subdomain, an SSL certificate, doesn't even put ads or watermarks on your site, and gives you unlimited CPU and RAM. So, is there a catch to using this service? Because it does sound a little bit too good to be true. Or is this genuinely a new, great free web hosting option to go for in 2024? Well, let's find out. Unlike something like Oracle, the free plans here are quite easy to get. All you need to do is click order now and then choose a free subdomain provided by Webhost Most. You do get to choose between two data centers, one is in the USA, the other one is in Europe, I'll go for the European one. And surprisingly enough, it even comes with a free website monitoring tool, so you will get emails if your website goes offline for any reason as a notification. When you try to check out, it will say that you need a credit card number, but if you choose the PayPal option and type in any address, it will work just fine. Now, I'm not sure if this is an oversight by the developers or it's the intended behavior, but at least at the time of making this video, it works without the need of a credit card, so even if you're young, you can use this option. And everything else is done completely automatic. You'll get your account set up and you will get an email with all of your FTP, control panel and account information, but you don't have to use those. You can just click on manage and then log into direct admin to reach your user control panel. The first thing I recommend you do is go into the developer tools, then PHP settings and use PHP 8.2. Then go into website management and activate Redis. Without going into too many details, this basically makes your website faster. So it's a good practice to use the tools that are available to you at any given point. And if we go into the resource monitor, we can actually see that the free plan has no limits in terms of CPU power, RAM, inodes, IO write and read speeds. But you do have a very small amount of space allocated to you just 125 megabytes of NVMe storage. So let's see if 125 megabytes of storage is enough and put a website on here to test the performance. To install WordPress, I can use Softaculous, which is a pretty standard way of automating installations. Just look up WordPress or anything else you might want to install and create your login details, then hit install. Everything else is actually completely automatic and quite fast. What is more surprising is that Lightspeed Cache comes pre-installed on this WordPress plan. And it works fine even without Quick Cloud CDN, which means that Webhost Most is using Lightspeed configured servers, which on average are around six times faster than regular Apache servers and around two times faster than Nginx. So this gives me quite high hopes for the performance. The problem is the storage limit. While you can install heavy plugins like Elementor, I would advise against this because you only have 125 megs of space to work with. Go with lightweight plugins and avoid bloat at all cost. For example, with Elementor and a theme installed, I don't have enough space for the necessary plugins to make my theme work properly. But if I delete Elementor and just use the built-in WordPress builder called Gutenberg, saving space on my website builder allows me to install the theme together with some demo content and make it look great right out of the box. And by using Gutenberg, I don't lose out on any functionality. I can still change everything I want about my website. But I mean, check out how fast this website feels. Definitely feels very premium and not something I would expect from a free web hosting provider that I signed up for like three minutes ago. Now, looking back on the storage limits, with all of this installed and my website online, it takes up around 110 megabytes of space from the allowed 125 megabytes. But I do have quite a lot of photos on my site, but they're all compressed and use the WebP file format to take as little space as possible. Anyways, 
let's see how the unlimited resources of this plan perform in some test scenarios. I ran a GT metrics test, testing from Germany because that's where I chose my data center to be. And for free hosting, the result is insane. The server responded in 64 milliseconds and the website fully loaded in 0.6 seconds. Just for reference of how crazy this is, here are some test scores from other free hosting platforms. Obviously, the result is fast. This is in large part due to the fact that we have Lightspeed server-side caching improving the performance a ton. Now, what's server-side caching? It's a process in which the server stores files on a proxy cache server. In simpler terms, if a user visits your website, the computer asks the server where the website is hosted for files to display to the user. The first time this happens, the server has to go into the database and look up the files associated with the website. Only then does the user get to see the website. But after it does this once, the server keeps a spare copy in the proxy cache server. So if another user visits the same site, then the server immediately has the files on hand and can display them a lot faster without even having to bother the database. Obviously, a lot, and by a lot, I mean absolutely every single one of free web hosting providers don't bother with this, because why would they? You're a free customer, they don't care about you. The servers they use are mostly decommissioned old tech waiting to die. So I was wondering, why does web host most bother with this? Maybe there's a more sinister side to this deal. Using public Whois records, I found that their domain was registered in May of 2022. That's very new. And using their terms of service, I also found that Webhost Most is an LLC founded in Delaware, USA. Delaware have public state records that show that the company was registered in 2023. <laughs> That's very, very recent. Companies that existed for less than one year and offer something free usually spell out trouble. So I went deeper into the privacy policy to see just what kind of information they collect about you, or at least what they say about the information that they collect about you. And what I found out was insane. Analyzing all of this, I have concluded that this is one of the best privacy policies I've seen. They only collect necessary information. They very clearly showcase what information and how they use it. They state that they do not sell your data and clearly define your rights as well as give you the necessary contact information to exercise your rights. But just to be sure this isn't all fake, I wanted to see if this is real information, not just some fake contact info. And in fact, yes, I was able to contact Valentin, ba Valentine, Valentin, sorry, I'm probably butchering this name, but I did manage to contact him through email and later through Discord. So this is a real person, this is a real company, and to the extent of my research, I can say that it's not malicious. And as a surprise bonus, not only don't they seem to be malicious, they also have some pretty robust security measures in place, offering an A plus rating when it comes to security headers for my free website. And any website that's using Webhost most automatically gets this security heading rating because that's something they have pre-configured into their automatic installations. For reference, Facebook doesn't even score A plus. Go figure. So why does Webhost most offer free web hosting? Well, I think it's a marketing campaign. They're probably, well, they're certainly a new company looking to establish themselves and they have the servers ready to go. They just need customers and offering something good for free is a decent way to get clients. If their users like the free product, they'll probably like the paid product even more. They'll upgrade and that's how they're gonna start generating revenue. And I'm almost 100% certain that these free servers are the same ones they use for paid services as well, because they do offer quite fairly priced plans that are also completely unlimited. Just have a storage cap of two gigs, five gigs, 10 gigs and above. So 
technically all of these perform exactly as well as the free plan or the free plan performs exactly as well as the paid ones. The only difference is how much stuff you can put on the server. The cheapest one is $5 a month. You don't need to pay for a year, two years or four years in advance. And there aren't any price increases after the first term is over. It's just $5 a month and that's it. Very fair. So I would definitely use this as a free web hosting provider. It seems a lot better than something like Infinity Free, 000 Webhost or freehosting.com. My website is extremely fast and looks professional. I'm quite happy with it. But do keep in mind that free is always unreliable because it might work well for a day, a week, a month, or even a year. But at the end of it, you're still at the mercy of your web hosting provider. So if you're serious, get cheap instead of free and find the best cheap web hosting providers that I personally recommend right here. Good luck creating your websites and I'll see you in the next video.